So today we're checking out the Jackery Explorer 5000. And this is brand new, it was just released today, and it is massive for being a Jackery. Typically a Jackery is very small and is used to power like a laptop or a cell phone. But this one is designed to partially back up your home. And you do so with this new smart transfer switch. So this is like a sub panel where you can run your critical loads like your refrigerator or your furnace, and then you can power it with the Jackery through this little cable right here. And the main unit can output 7,200 watts with a split phase output. So it can do 120 or 240 volts. And this does not need to be connected to any batteries. It actually has a 5,000 watt hour battery built inside but you can expand the system. So we have an expansion battery down here. These are pretty darn expensive, but it has the same capacity as a server rack battery. So 5,000 watt hours. So this expansion battery and the main unit have the same battery capacity. Next, this is the first Jackery with a high voltage PV input. Typically with Jackeries, you have to use their panels with their proprietary connectors, and then they have a low voltage input. So the performance is really bad. But with this one, it can go up to 450 volts and you can now use your own panels. So today we're gonna test it out and see if it actually works and see if it's worth the money because it's pretty darn expensive. This main unit is $3,500. These expansion batteries are $2,500. And this transfer switch is $1,000. $500. And we're gonna do some really fun testing. We're gonna charge a Tesla with it. We're gonna use this transfer switch and all sorts of other cool stuff. So let's get started. So first off, these things actually lock in place. You need a screwdriver to release them. Same thing with the battery cable. And these plugs are actually directional. They're kind of a pain in the butt to put in there. Now it weighs 130 pounds, but it has four wheels on the bottom. So it's actually very easy to move. Now on the front, we can turn it on with this power switch. Now the display shows the state of charge and how much is going in and how much is going out. Then you have USB and 12 volt receptacles right here. And on the bottom, we have 420 amp receptacles and this is how you turn on the inverter. And when you turn these on, the receptacles on the side turn on for 240 volts. And over here, this is where we connect the transfer switch. And then we have a generator plug and then a NEMA 1450. And you can charge an electric car like a Tesla directly from this port. And on the other side, we have the AC input if you wanna charge from a normal outlet. And this is where you connect your expansion batteries. And then inside here, we have the low voltage input, the high voltage input, and the switch. So once you connect your solar panels right here, you flip this switch to turn it on and to start charging. Now the first test is a load test with an electric vehicle. And this is the new Tesla Model 3 performance that we're gonna be charging. If you've never driven a Tesla before, check out the new Model 3. It's on a completely different level. Even the build quality is good. I don't know how they did it, but this is like my favorite one they've ever made now. So this plugs in on the side and watch your hands. This can shock you. Now don't forget if you want these on, you have to turn it on over here with this AC on switch. And then on the screen, it will show 120, 240 volts, and that means you're ready to charge. Uh-oh, we got a red light. And it says unable to charge with mobile connector, inadequate outlet grounding. That's because this charger in particular requires a ground neutral bond. So let's try a non-Tesla charger and see if that works. So first turn it off and then remove the plug. Oh, it's working. So now let's take 7,200 divided by 240 volts and it gives us 30 amps. So let's set the car to 30 amp charge rate and it's doing it. It just went through 9% pretty quickly. Yeah, we're outputting 7,300 watts. So let's see if it can keep running this. This thing is quiet. For 7,000 watts, this thing is dead silent. You can barely hear it. This has to be the most quiet inverter I've ever heard. This is even quieter than a 12K PV. That is crazy. Now I have the app right here and the Bluetooth icon is flashing, but every time I click it, 
It says the specified device was not found. It will not connect. I've tried this like 20 times and it simply does not work. So hopefully they can fix this on the ones that are going out. Also, the app is supposed to connect to the transfer switch, but I haven't been able to do that either. And I've tried everything. I tried reinstalling the app, turning my phone on and off, everything else. I even power cycled this many, many times and it will not connect. Now, while it's charging the car, let's hook up the expansion battery and see what happens and both of them are locked and it's not showing the battery. Now, unfortunately, it also says this in the manual, you have to turn off everything, reconnect it, turn it back on, and then the expansion battery will communicate. If not, it will not show up here. So let's turn this off, turn it back on. There we go. Once you get this icon, it means that the battery is now connected. Now, yesterday when I connected it, I couldn't get the expansion battery to charge. It showed that it was connected, but it wasn't charging. So let's see if it can discharge. I've never tested this before. Let's turn on the inverter. Now we're charging the car. This battery is at 74% and this one's at 22%. Uh oh, this one dropped, but this one is not dropping. <gasps> it actually worked 21%. It's finally working. How cool is that now? Let's see if these both hit zero at the same time, because sometimes one will shut down before the other and you lose some of the capacity. So let's see if they figured that out in the software. Now the test is almost done. We're at 1% and 1%. So it's actually using all the available energy and it's still super quiet. I don't know what they're doing with this thing, but it's dead silent for this much load for this much time. Oh, there we go, 0% and it turned off. Cool. Now let's charge it up with AC. We're gonna charge it up to 240 volts and see what happens. So this is the transfer switch. We have a load breaker for a Tesla charger over here, and this connects to the grid input. So first we're gonna plug this in. And to charge quickly, we have to use this cable. This goes from the transfer switch to the main unit. And it's on, and it shows there's power from the grid. So let's see if it's charging. And it's actually charging. How cool is that? Let's see if it will charge this expansion battery this time, because I could not get it to work yesterday. So now we're charging at 3,700 watts. This one's at 6% state of charge, and this one finally started charging. We finally got the charge indicator, and it went up from zero to one. Yesterday, it showed that it was connected, and no matter what I did, it wouldn't charge this other battery. But now it seems to be working just fine. I was scared that I have to have to charge this one up all the way for this one to charge. That's why I was at 100% this morning and it still wouldn't work. I don't understand. Now we're gonna charge the Tesla with a Tesla charger in the transfer switch. So if this was connected to your house panel, there would be a ground neutral bond. So this one's not connected. This is connected to an off-grid system. So I created my own ground neutral bond, which means we can use a Tesla charger. So let's hook it up. And it's actually working this time. And this is still charging, but the output of this is zero. So that means it's pulling 3,700 watts from the grid, and so is the Tesla. And those conductors are not sized for that at all. So let's disconnect it from the grid. Oh, it turned off. It didn't have a fast transfer. Well, that's pretty lame. Oh, now it's working. And that's not good. Usually if the grid disappears, it will switch everything over to this inverter and this will be in standby mode. But it did not do that. It had to wake it up and then it took a few seconds. So maybe we need to turn on the inverter and try that test again. So let's turn it on, connect the grid. No, and it stopped charging. That's not good. That is too slow. That's like a three second transfer time. It should be like a millisecond or something. Wow, that is the slowest transfer time I've ever seen in my life. Now the Tesla is being powered by the grid. So let's disconnect the grid again, but with the inverter on this time and see what, and it just turned off. So let's turn it on and let's disconnect the grid and see what happens. Nope, it didn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, this needs some work right here, the transfer switch. Now for the next test, we're gonna hook up some high voltage solar panels and see what happens. So we have to disconnect all of these. Oh, wow. If you disconnect the battery, it turns off the inverter? That's weird. Maybe every time you do anything, you have to turn everything off and then turn it back on again.
Now outside this is connected to a ground mount array with four Aptos solar panels, which is around 160 volts, which is perfect for the high voltage input. So first flip this switch and then flip this one and it's actually charging with about 500 watts. Now let's turn on the inverter. Now the inverter and everything else is turned on and it seems to be working great. Now let's connect the expansion battery and see if it still works. Now we're gonna turn it off and it won't turn off. So let's disconnect the solar. There we go. Connect the expansion battery. This needs to be off too. And turn it back on, turn on the solar. Battery is now connected and it's charging. It actually works. That's good. And we have full sunshine on those panels and we're only getting 500 watts still. So what we're gonna do is hook it up to the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, <laughs> that's a long name, and see if it can do more than that. And to remove the MC4s, you have to use this tool and always turn these things off before you mess with them. 500 watts for all the panels being exposed to direct sunlight is a bit low. And look at that, 1300 watts. Why is the Jackery not able to track the PowerPoint? The most we could get from the Jackery was 500 watts. And it says in the manual 135 volts minimum for the Jackery, but the Delta Ultra Pro is 80 volt minimum. So I think the working voltage on the Jackery with this array, you need a minimum of five panels with a voltage open circuit of 40 volts because four panels is just not doing it. That's crazy, that's a 55 volt difference. Now the low voltage port only goes up to 60 volts. So from 60 volts to voltage open circuit 160 volts, there's nothing you can connect. So with the low voltage port, you could use one or two panels or a bunch of small 12 volt panels. But if you wanna use the high voltage port, you need to bump it up to five panels, unless you have some weird high voltage panels or something. So in my opinion, that's a selling point for the EcoFlow. Now the maximum voltage for the EcoFlow and the Jackery is the same at 450 volts. And EcoFlow recommends 4,000 watts. And the Jackery does not have a recommended wattage. It just says the current and the voltage. I'm guessing it's gonna be around the same as this one because they're rated the same. Now the Jackery actually has low voltage panels that you can buy for it. And they look pretty sweet. And these things are expensive, okay? There's like over a thousand dollars for this set right here. First off, it's a bifacial panel and it's super lightweight. This is a hundred watt panel and it weighs like nothing. Frames are really thin so you can pack them really small, but it doesn't flex. It flexes a little bit and you really don't want these to flex. That's why the flex panels are so bad. They cause micro fractures inside the cells. And typically the output will decrease very quickly on those panels. Oh no, they're using Anderson connectors still. Why does your engineer get so obsessed over these things? Typically it's an instant fail if they're using these without any type of protection, but this one actually does. I think they should find something else though. These are just not that good. Actually, that's a pretty good seal. Okay, maybe it's good. Now, I've only messed with these panels for the last 10 minutes, so there's no way I can draw a conclusion on these things. I have to cycle these outside in the desert to know if they're any good. Now, if these do work really well with minimal degradation, I would be pretty darn impressed because this will be the lightest panel. Actually, these would be perfect for my golf carts. These are so thin and light and they have holes for mounting, so I could just screw it in onto the roof. And the voltage is 50 volts. So yeah, these might be pretty cool. So yeah, I'll hook these up and report back in like another year and we'll see if they actually hold up. But man, they are expensive. The solar generators, the folding panels that come with them always cost a ton of money. If you wanna save money, buy some cheap panels or even some used solar panels and hook it up to your system. They work just fine. But I must admit, these are different. These are pretty special. I've never seen anything like this before. Now compared to every Jackery in the past, that has to be the best one I've ever tested. But there's still some software issues. So first, the transfer time it worked but it took like three seconds and it's supposed to be zero milliseconds it's supposed to be seamless but I'm not seeing that next I found lots of software issues if you don't turn everything down when you connect or disconnect the expansion battery also you need to disconnect solar and the grid and then power cycle it and then the communication will actually work next the solar panels need to be cheaper those things are so freaking expensive next the transfer case if you look at the sides you have to drill your own holes but there's lots of stuff in the way so if you're trying to put large conductors in there it's very very difficult. I actually had to do three holes 
because my hydraulic hole cutter would just not fit. You have to get it at the perfect angle. Next, the high voltage solar input requires a minimum of 135 volts. And that's a bit high. The EcoFlow, which is this thing's main competitor, is only 80 volts. So if you're running the Jackery with some Hyperions or Aptos bifacial panels that have a voltage open circuit of 40, you're gonna have to put at least five in series. And honestly, I would bump that up to six, just so that you have good performance in the morning and the afternoon. Now I know that they have a smart transfer switch, but I think it's too expensive. This 200 amp transfer switch is only $800 and for a critical loads panel, this one's only $350 and it does 30 amps. So hopefully they can lower that price in the future. Next, the unit is not waterproof, like an 18K PV, for example. It's very quiet and it's very efficient. It actually has a very low idle consumption, but you're gonna have to mount this thing indoors, which means the transfer switch needs to be near your panel and also indoors. So for some of you, it's gonna be hard or very expensive to wire this thing up. Now, if your main panel is connected to your garage, you can easily run those wires into there and then keep the battery inside but it really depends on how your house is designed. Next, the cable from the main unit to the expansion battery needs to be longer. It's simply too short and I feel like I'm bending the heck out of it. Next, the transfer switch will not connect to my phone and neither will the main unit and I've tried that so many times. Now, besides all of that, if they can fix those, it's actually a pretty good unit. And I was looking up the price of the EcoFlow and for this thing's output, it's actually pretty good. But those batteries are very expensive, $2,500 you can buy a server rack with the same capacity for $1,200. And if you buy multiple batteries, that's a significant amount of money. That's a lot of money. And that's all I discovered while testing the Jaggery. I think it was a step in the right direction, but it really needs some more work. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked it. Please let me know if you have any questions down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.